Hello and welcome to ATP Report. I'm Barry Newsbaum. Before I introduce our very special and popular guest today, I want to remind everybody out there in ATP land to please take out your cell phone if you haven't done so already. Type the message TRUTH, T-R-U-T-H, in the message box and send it to the number 88202, push send. You'll be signed up for free. You'll get all of our content like this show for free on the palm of your hand just for signing up. Absolutely for free. So let me bring on Tyler O'Neill. He is the senior editor at PJ Media. He's an author, conservative commentator. He's written for lots of publications, including the Christian Post, National Review, Washington Free Beacon, The Daily Signal, AEI's Values in Capitalism. And he has a book out, Making Hate Pay, The Corruption of the Southern Poverty Law Center. And we have him instead of Tucker Carlson tonight. Welcome, Tyler. Glad to be here, Barry. So today, let's discuss the most bigoted member of Congress, in our opinion, and the one that you called out in print a few days ago, writing about her in a terrific article. Um, I'm referring, of course, to the infamous hater of Israel, hater of America, and hater of American things, Ilhan Omar. So let's start off with last week, she said, quote, we have seen unthinkable atrocities committed by the U.S., Hamas, Israel, Afghanistan, and the Taliban. She got terrific amounts of backlash, as she should have, and even Nancy Pelosi was called into it. She tried to clarify her remarks, which she really didn't. Um, what do you think she meant? Just take the words for what she said instead of her goofball retraction, would you please? Yeah, so I think the the delay in this retraction speaks volume. And again, it, it isn't exactly a direct retraction, but she did very much say like, oh, I wasn't, I wasn't comparing the two. And it's like, she clearly was nodding at, you know, a suggestion that there's this moral equivalence between Israel, America, uh, Hamas, Afghanistan, and the, Tal and the Taliban. And, you know, that's, just beyond the pale, quite frankly, especially when you list Israel and Hamas together, the way that Israel has been trying really hard not to endanger civilians in the recent, uh, in the recent scuffle with Hamas, that you know, pseudo war it almost was, and the way that Hamas had specifically been using civilians as human shields. You know, these are, these are two different moral universes. And you know, Ilhan Omar has shown over and over again, talking about whether it's all about the Benjamins or uh, some of her other notoriously anti-Semitic remarks and suggestions. She has been toying with the most common hatred that you see in the Middle East, which is anti-Semitism. Uh, there's, there's this terrifying percentage. If you look at and the uh, Anti-Defamation League has done a lot of studies on anti-Semitism in the Middle East. And, you know, I don't always follow the ADL and think they're entirely accurate on everything, but it stands to reason, given the way that many of the, the Muslims in that particular part of the world interact with Jews, anti-Semitism is very rife there. And Ilhan Omar comes from Somalia. And that's not to say that, you know, all Somali Americans should be, uh, should be regarded with uh, distrust. But in the case of Ilhan Omar, there's more than just a suggestion that she's taken a lot of the hatreds that are in her country with her when she came to the United States. Well, before we get into too much of the words, what, what shocks me so much, Tyler, is the Speaker of the House, the third most powerful politician in America is Nancy Pelosi. She's the leader of the majority party. She runs the House of Representatives. She literally did nothing to condemn these horrific words. And in her last press conference um, the other day, she literally refused to answer the question about her, her, her being Ilhan Omar's inflammatory comments about Israel and just brushed it off, did not want to answer it. Why is it that Nancy Pelosi cannot stand up to Ilhan Omar. What is she truly afraid of? Well, it was, it was very interesting. We saw shortly after the remarks, the most recent remarks, 
Pelosi followed after a group of uh, Jewish Democrats did condemn Omar. And then Pelosi and other Democratic leaders had this interesting like pseudo condemnation where they're like, we are appalled and we invite Ilhan Omar to clarify her remark. Well, pretty much giving her the benefit of the doubt, even while saying that they're condemning it. So that was a positive step. But then as you noted, you know, as soon as this clarification came out, uh, Pelosi stopped everything. She even defended Ilhan Omar specifically. And then, you know, she's, she's been radio silent. And this just goes to show how feckless a lot of the democratic leadership is when it comes to calling out the extreme, the radicals on their fringe. And, you know, these are becoming less and less fringe. Uh, after Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and her squad, they're really dominating a lot of the conversation in the Democratic Party. This is, this is politics for them. Well, let's, let's talk politics. You just touched on an interesting concept that Nancy Pelosi seems to always open the door for Ilhan Omar to run away from what she said repeatedly. So here's the clarification. I want to read it to you that finally came out. This is from Omar. Quote, to be clear, the conversation was about accountability for specific incidents regarding the International Criminal Court cases, not a moral comparison between Hamas and the Taliban and the US in Israel. I was in no way equating terrorist organizations with democratic countries with well-established judicial systems. Um, that was written by a PR flack, not by her. And it was a perfect lie because the context of what she was saying had nothing to do with the ICC. It had to do with what a hateful organization the United States and Israel are, you know, just like the major terror groups of the world. So why in the world can she issue a statement that you and I both know she didn't write? And number two, we both know she doesn't mean it. And everyone lets her get away with it and the subject gets dropped. Did she just lie again and there's no accountability? Pretty much. I think what you're looking at is a Democratic Party that is so focused on its woke goals and its agenda that it's willing to overlook when there are, you know, when incidents of hatred towards Jews shows, show their heads. And I think this, this situation has happened again and again with squad members. Um, it, it, it was very fascinating to see when um, all of the Democrats ganged up on Marjorie Taylor Greene and kicked her out of her committee assignments. And like, I, I wouldn't defend what Marjorie Taylor Greene said previously. Even she gave her half-hearted, you know, pushes, condemnations, denunciations of it. But it was interesting to see them focus so much on her while at the same time, you had remarks from the squad that essentially amounted to a blood libel against Israel, where they were saying that, and, and this, this was mind boggling evil, the way that they did this, they blamed Israel for not giving COVID-19 vaccines to the Palestinians, even though, you know, the, the way the political system had worked, Israel had offered to give the COVID-19 vaccine and Hamas had said no. And so here you had Democrats in Congress you, pushing this absurd lie, essentially trying to blame Israel and saying that Israel was killing innocent people in a situation where Israel was actually trying to help and Hamas was the one denying any any aid. And yet they got away with that while Marjorie Taylor Greene was, you know, crucified. And that's the kind of double standard on anti-Semitism that prevails in this Democratic Party. And well, we let's don't talk, talk let's, enough. Let's, let's about talk it. about that party for a second, because here's something I don't get. And maybe you understand it, because I'm dying to hear the answer to this one. There's 435 members of the House of Representatives. And 220, more than half, obviously, are Democrats. There's 35 Jewish members, but only 12 of the Jewish members condemned Omar's remarks. 
only 12, they wrote a letter condemning her. And get this, the rest of the Congress, crickets, nothing. In other words, the closest ally America has in that part of the world is Israel. And there's nobody else even on the list. And Israel and the United States are called terror operations. And the United States Congress, Democrats and Republicans can't open their mouth and just cut this to ribbons. I don't get it. Why was nothing said? Well, I think many of the Republicans thought that this was a Democratic, like the Democrats needed to get their house in order. And uh, I, I think many of them did speak out against it, uh, against the remarks, although they did not offer a similar letter. And I almost, you know, I wish that they had. Uh, but the, uh, yet the fact that there were so there were crickets after this um you know that, that there weren't more efforts and that you didn't have the sustained outcry that you had against marjorie taylor green i think is is revealing unfortunately i think uh a lot of the republicans in congress knew that it was going to be a losing battle if they uh if they tried to bring an overall resolution or if they tried to kick her off of committees or if they tried to do something like that. I think there was enough outcry in, at least on our circles in conservative media and in uh, some legacy media outlets. Um, so this, this story did get some of the traction that it, that it needed, uh, but it hasn't gotten quite the traction that it deserves. And so that's, you know, another another situation here where the, the complications on the ground in Congress may may offer some ex explanation that we don't understand at the moment. Well, there's another part I don't get, which is the press. The only uh, interview I could find um, was Jake Tapper of CNN had her on and he said to her, he, he gave her back her quotes you know, anti-Semitic quote after anti-Semitic quote after anti-Israel comment. And he asked her, do you regret these comments? And she said, I don't. You know, I was trying to make certain points and then Tapper brought it up again and gave her quote after quote after quote and her goofball non-answer, non-responsibility um, statement was, I welcome any time my colleagues have asked to have a conversation so I can learn from them. I don't even know what that means. And Tapper didn't follow up. And none of the other press did at all. <sighs> Nobody's reporting this. Why? Yeah. The, the thing that really shocked me was what she said after that. She said, you know, to learn from them, for them to learn from me. And then she went on to say that her members haven't been partners in justice. And here's a direct quote. They haven't been equally seeking justice around the world. And this is in this context, Ilhan Omar is specifically talking about the Israel-Palestine situation, the, is the Israel-Hamas situation. And I think she is condemning her Jewish fellow Democrats for supporting Israel's right to defend itself against Hamas's right to abuse the situation. And she's, she's actually, you know, she gets accosted with her own anti-Semitic remarks, refuses to condemn them, and then immediately attacks her Jewish fellow Democrats in the House. I mean, this is, this is beyond the pale kind of stuff. And I, I don't understand why it isn't getting more coverage, why you know, we, we don't see denunciations. Like we should be seeing, and you know, during, during the Trump presidency, we would have seen if any Republican had made remarks like this, we would have seen all the legacy news outlets running, you know, condemnations of them. They, they'd have the, uh, the good old fashioned, you know, the, the Republican sellout going on and saying, well, you know, I believe in Republicanism, but this was beyond the pale, yada, yada. And yet now we don't see Democrats coming out and saying, oh, I support a lot of what Ilhan Omar supports, but this is how dare she say this. 
they they need to be saying and and if you ask me this is almost as bad as the original comment that she made but, well said tyler where can people find out about you if they want to know what you're doing yeah so i i write at tj media i'm the senior editor there uh you can find my book making hate pay on amazon it's uh, the corruption of the southern poverty law center Find me on Twitter, Tyler2, the number two, O'Neill. Well, thanks for coming on today, Tyler. And for those of you out there that haven't subscribed, I mentioned it earlier in the program, please text TRUTH, T-R-U-T-H, send it to the number 88202. Sign up for free. You'll get all of our content in the palm of your hand just for about five seconds of your precious time investment. For ATP Report, thanks for joining us today. I'm Barry Newsbaum. 